Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of CUDA Crash Course, we're going to be talking about how to deal with non-perfect input sizes. So in the previous examples from quite a while ago now, when we talked about matrix multiplication, and we talked about vector addition, uh, both of those were using, say, powers of two as inputs, because we're really trying to just show off, you know, the basics of CUDA programming, and also, um, you know, the, you know, really testing out our algorithms with perfect input sizes that we, we could get an idea of how fast these applications can run when you know we've got very equally sized inputs um, but you know oftentimes the real world isn't quite as nice so in this episode what we're going to look at is uh, you know how we think about you know doing padding All right so let's go ahead and open up our example for today and we'll call it input sizing All right so let's go ahead and open it up so what are we doing here, right? So we've got two naive implementations of two kernels, right? So we've got a vector addition kernel that does no bounds checks. It just adds um, whatever, you know, TID is, which is a thread ID. And so this is something that we can do if we know ahead of time that every single thread uh, maps perfectly to every single element. So we have as many elements as we have launched threads. Likewise, we do the exact same thing for matrix multiplication. Right, and then we have a better matrix mold right here that we'll leave as kind of a shell for now. Uh, but we'll go ahead and expand on this in order to do that bounds checking that we need there. When we'll just modify the vector addition one. Okay, so what does the rest of the application do? Right, so up here we've got a problem size, and right now we'll be using some perfect, perfectly uh, sized inputs. Right, so for the vectors, they'll all be powers of two, say two to the twenty, and then right now. Uh, for a matrix multiplication, so M, N, and K being the M uh, and N by N matrix times an N by K matrix, which will lead to an M by K result. Uh, these will all be the exact same. So this would be the same thing if we just had a square matrix, like I believe we showed off in our examples. Right? And then the rest of it is just some uh, allocation of memory, followed by um, some thread block calculation that you know, we're not doing any padding here, so it's just assuming that it's even division and then we copy the data over and we call these kernels right so if we go ahead and you know compile this right with nvcc with uh, nvcc o input sizing input sizing with cu right so we've got some we've got some uh, declared but not reference variables those are just in the kernel we haven't finished yet so if we go ahead and run this we see that you know no seg fault or anything it runs those two kernels but uh, it runs those two kernels, so it's so matrix mole and vector add. But you know what we haven't done, you know, as of yet, is you know, work with some non-standard inputs, right? So how do we handle this? So let's think about vector addition first. Uh, it's a very simple thing because it's uh, one-dimensional, uh, a one-dimensional grid of threads, right? So we just have threads in the x dimension, right? So right now, you know, if we go ahead and we you know, think of say you know having you know let's go ahead and you know, we'll reduce the size of our grid here just for an example right so let's say that we've got you know each grid has or each thread block has four threads in it right so this thread block will have you know four threads in it and what happens if we say have you know an array with five elements right so let's get rid of this and let's say we've got an array that has five elements maybe it's you know zero one two, three, four, right? So if we were to map this to thread blocks, what would happen? Well, if we were to map to thread blocks, we'd have one thread block that would have our first four threads, but then we'd actually need to launch a second thread block with four threads, you know, with the other ones not being active, right? And so this is what we call padding. Now, the big question is, how do we calculate how many thread blocks that we need? And it turns out that it's a fairly simple calculation. Right, so what we do is we take the size of this, um, this vector, right, or this array, which is going to be, uh, in this case, there's going to be five elements. Right? We add one less than the size of the thread block. So in this case, it'll be uh, five plus uh, one less than the size of the thread block, three. And then we divide it by the size of the thread block. Right, and so in this case, what do we get? We get eight divided by four, which is going to equal two. 
right? Now, what happens at different sizes, right? Um, so at different sizes, right? Uh, so let's think about what would happen for say, um, if we had two elements, right? So two elements uh, inside of this, uh, you know, maybe we had six total elements in this array that we're trying to deal with, right? So maybe this goes all the way up to five now. So now this equation turns into six, again, plus three divided by four, right? Uh, right. So it's going to be six plus one minus the size of the thread block divided by four. So this turns into nine divided by four, which is going to be equal to uh, 2.25. But because we're storing this as an integer, it'll actually just cut off this bottom portion. So it's still two. Now, if we push this all the way to the extreme, now what happens if we say have, you know, eight total elements here, we end up getting, you know, uh, in this case, you know, eight is the number of elements we have, plus one minus the thread block size. So plus three divided by, uh, in this case, it'll be by four. And so this will end up being 11 divided by four, right? And this will give us a number that's two and three fourths. But again, this won't, uh, this is getting stored as an integer. So the three fourths part is going to go away. So basically what it does is that if we have any amount left over, right? So if we have any of these trailing threads, it will go ahead and pad this out and give us that extra thread block that we need, right? So that's what we can modify down here in our code to start handling first, you know, needing more thread blocks. So what we'll end up doing is we'll just take this V, we'll say, uh, v plus threads v minus one divided by threads v right and this just makes sure that we always add an extra thread block uh, if we need to and if we are at a perfect size well we'll just end up having uh, a leftover threads v minus one over threads v with which will be less than a, a whole number it'll be less than one uh, and so that'll round down to zero, right? If threads V divides V equally. Okay, so that's part one. So now we can launch, you know, an arbitrary size vector, right? Or an arbitrary sized array for vector addition. Now the problem is in the actual vector addition kernel, we have to take into consideration that some of these threads shouldn't be active. Now in this case, it's fairly easy. And we'll see that it's fairly easy for the matrix multiplication case as well. All right, so in order to handle this here, all we really need to do is make sure that we're only doing this addition if it's a valid thread. How do we figure out if it's a valid thread? Well, it's a simple if statement. And we say that if TID is less than N. So why does this, uh, why does this work or why does this make sense? Well, this works and makes sense because uh, our thread ID is just the index of a vector, right? So if we have 10 elements, that means the valid indexes and the valid thread IDs are going to be zero through nine. So if I say launch 10 threads, uh, or if I launch 11 threads, or say 12 threads, right? So you know, those 11th and 12th threads are going to have an invalid index, right? Uh, because I only need 10 threads. So I just need, in this case, I just check to see if TID matches a correct index within this um, within this vector, which will be an element from zero to n minus one uh, for the values of TID, right? And that's all we need to do here in order to have, you know, an arbitrarily sized. Uh, oh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, to have an arbitrarily sized vector addition input, right? So now let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Uh, or right, let's go ahead and run this and kind of sanity check it. So we had one, you know, this is one meg here. So why don't we change it up to be something different? We can change it to just be some random input of say, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, you know, something that definitely isn't a power of two, right? And so we can go ahead and compile again. Right. And if there was if there was a problem with this, we would get a segmentation fault because, you know, we'd be stop we'd be reaching out of bounds in our memory. But we see that it runs and it actually 
you know, finish this correctly. So we didn't get any problems there. All right, so what do we do next? All right, so the next thing is we have to tackle matrix multiplication. Now up here, there's really two things we need to take into consideration. A, we need to take into consideration what do we do about launching extra blocks. Now with extra blocks, it's a fairly simple fix, right? In this case, um, it's exactly the same as, you know, the case over here for vector addition. The only difference now is that we do this in two dimensions. So we have to just pad the rows and we have to pad the columns. So if we go down here, exactly what we did for um, this blocks V over here, now we have to do it for blocks rows and blocks columns, All right? So now, just as a reminder, you know, the grid that we're specifying for vector addition, we're specifying as many threads as we want output elements. So every thread will calculate one output element. And we're doing the same thing for matrix multiplication. So let's get rid of this right here. Now let's kind of switch gears and talk about matrix multiplication. All right, so here, if we say have, you know, you know, let's say square matrices, right? Right, so this one will have, you know, there we go. Right, so this will have, you know, M rows and N columns, and this one will have N rows and K columns, and what we'll be left up with is uh, a matrix with M rows and K columns, right? And so what we need to do now is we need to make sure that, you know, if, uh, if we have something that's non-power of two, we're padding both the M dimension and the K dimension. But, you know, if, let's say the, these are all four elements, right? So it's a four by, it's a two by two matrix times a two by two matrix. It'll give us a two by two result because both M and K will be two, right? So uh, what we're basically saying here is that I'm going to launch one thread that will calculate each position in this M by K matrix. So that's why I have to have this, you know, padding on two different variables is because, you know, I might need to pad just the rows or I might need to pad just the columns or both. Right, and we do it, like I said, it's the exact same calculation as we did for the vector. Right, so it's just going to be uh, M, and we'll do plus threads M minus one, and we'll do the exact same thing for K as well. So here we'll do K plus, oops, not or, we'll do plus threads M minus one. Right, and then divide it by threads m. Right, in this case, just as clarification, so for the vector addition, we're launching 256 uh, thread thread blocks. Right, and these are all in the x direction. For the uh, matrix multiplication, we're still launching 256 threads per thread block, but we're doing it in two dimensions now. So we're going to have a 16 by 16 thread block. Right, and the number of those 16 16 by 16 thread blocks is going to be based upon the number of rows we need and the number of columns we need. And we pack those into these DIM3 um, structures. All right, All right, and again, it may seem a little backwards, but for a grid, right, we specify the number of columns and then the number of rows because the number of columns uh, are going to be in the X direction, right? So if, if you think about it like this, right? So our columns are right here and then our rows are right here. So the number of rows we have and the number of columns we have. All right. So, you know, now we've now we've taken care of our padding. So, uh, you know, because of this, you know, this will take care of, uh, you know, if we launch some kind of awkward size, right? As far as now we're launching as many threads, but just like with vector addition, now what we need to worry about is you know, what do we do about something that isn't a power of two? And, you know, how do we handle that? So in this matrix multiplication, it's assuming a square matrix because it only has this integer n as an input, right? Now, if we wanted, you know, just for the square matrix, that is, if we wanted to make sure that, uh, that, you know, this code can run uh, a square matrix of any size, so still not handling, you know, unique M and K values, right? So still square matrices, but a square matrix that's say 500 times 500 instead of 512 times 512. All we would need to do here is just do a simple check with N. 
and we need to make sure that both the row and the column are less than n. All right, so here we would just say if row is uh, less than n and column is less than n. All right, and that's all we would need to do. All right, and then we can just have this down here. And so what does this say? So this just says, you know, no, I know that my result is going to be, you know, for a square matrix like this is, right? So this naive matrix multiplication is assuming an n by n matrix. An n by n matrix times an n by n matrix will give us an n by n result, right? So uh, this is just saying with this if statement, I need to make sure that the row I'm on is within that n by n matrix, and I need to make sure that the column I'm on is within that n by n matrix. Otherwise, I'm off the matrix in some spot. Right, so maybe I'm, oops, so maybe I'm out here, right? So maybe I'm some thread that's, you know, mapped over here, right? Or mapped over here, right? So even though the column is valid, the row is not valid. Or likewise, it could be something like this where the row is valid, but the column is not valid because it's outside of that matrix, right? So that's how we solve, you know, the bounds for a simple uh, matrix like this, right? So still square but not a perfect multiple of two. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is, well now how do we solve it for uh, matrices that are, are you know, not just not a multiple of two, but also uh, have unique M and K values, right? So not a square matrix, um, you know, rectangular matrices or a rectangular matrix times a square matrix. Okay, so in order to do that, it's still the same kind of if statement that we need to calculate, except this time we need to pass in the three dimensions. We need to pass in M, N, and K. Now we're still going to have this for loop that will go over the N dimension because the N is going to be that common dimension. So that'll be the number of columns of this matrix and the number of rows of the other matrix. So that's still the number, that's still how we traverse the matrix, but it's not the bounds we check. The bounds we check is going to be this M and K, because M and K are going to be our results. Now, like we already said, M is going to be the rows, and then K is going to be the columns. So if you could already guess, that's what our if statement needs to check. Our if statement needs to check if you know row is going to be less than M, and we need to also make sure that we're meeting the other condition of column being less than K. So if we do that, what, what have we ensured? So we've ensured this guarantee not only for a square matrix, but for a rectangular matrix as well, right? And so if we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and copy these two guys in here, and then we can fill out the rest of our code. Now the rest of our code will actually look exactly the same as the other matrix multiplication. So what do we do? So we'll just do four and I is equal to zero i is less than n, right, because there's still n elements in the rows of this matrix A, and then n elements in the columns of matrix B. So we're still traversing over n elements. Uh, i is less than uh, n, and then i plus plus, right, and then we'll just accumulate in our temp result, plus equals, right, and so in this case, we'll go ahead and uh, get from A, so A we know is going to be uh, an M by N matrix, right? And so in order to index that, and it's going to, we know that we're going to be stuck on a row. So we're going to figure out what row it is. We know that this is going to be N elements per row, right? So it's be times N, and then it'll be plus uh, the offset within that row, which is going to be I. Right, and then we're going to multiply this by the matrix from B, right? And this is going to be indexing, indexing into the column of this matrix B, right? And so to get that, now we know that uh, this time the row is going to change. So in this, uh, in this case, it's going to be I times the number of elements inside of each row of this matrix, which is going to be I times K and then it'll be plus the offset column, right? So just to kind of explain this again, right? So we need to see how many rows 
we need to skip down and each row is going to be uh, in elements long because it's an n by n matrix, right? And so to do that, it'll be row times n. So uh, it's going to be uh, row in rows. Then uh, i is just going to be the offset within that row. And then on the other side of thing, it's going to be uh, i times k is going to be the row, which means we're going to skip down every iteration to the next row. And how many elements do we need to skip to get from this element right here to this element right here? Well, we need to skip k elements, right? So that's why it's i times k. And then the offset is going to be constant, which is going to be column, right? And then we go ahead and write that there. And then we also know that row and column is valid here, right? Because we guarantee that with that if condition. So we can just go ahead and write that back to the final matrix. So we can just say that C of row times. Now, in this case, we know that it's going to be you know, K different uh, elements, right? To go over, it'll be row times K plus, and then uh, this will just be the offset, which is column, right? And we know that column is going to be valid because we've checked that right here, right? So that's going to be, you know, for a right back, and we'll just set that equal to this temp value that we've, you know, accumulated, right? And so that's going to go ahead and do it. Let's see. Ah, we need to make sure we capitalize K. All right, there we go. Now, the only thing left to do is let's test it out and make sure that it works. So instead of naive matrix mull, let's call better matrix mull now, right? So we can go ahead and just swap this out with better matrix mull. Grid M and threads M will calculate correctly because the, we've already set that up up here. And then DM, DB, and DC, but now we need to make sure we pass in M as well as n and k. Now the other test we need to do is we need to go ahead and just use some, you know, some funny sized inputs. So we can use, you know, m being say, you know, 86. We can leave, you know, n as being 9. That doesn't matter. Or or let's let's have it as uh, let's get rid of that. Sorry. So m will be 86. N, in this case, we can say, you know, maybe 560 or maybe 530 maybe. And then K we can have as an arbitrary number as well. So maybe it's going to be 75, right? So we'll have an 86 by 530 matrix and a 530 by 74 matrix. And what it should give us is an 86 by 74 result, right? So if we go ahead and we call this now, so we're calling better matrix mole now, with our awkwardly sized, you know, matrix or problems. So we'll go ahead and compile this and we'll see if we get a seg fault or anything, right? And it turns out it runs, right? So that's how we kind of handle these different input sizes, right? All we have to do is uh, two specific things. A, we need to pad our grid. So the grid that we're going to launch onto the GPU, we pad our grid, you know, typically using this very simple calculation this V plus threads underscore V minus one, right? Divided by threads V. And this will just give us, you know, a guarantee of at least one extra thread block if we don't have a perfectly sized multiple of threads V or threads M. And then the second part is within the kernel itself. So in the case of vector addition, we just need to make sure that it's a valid index. So in this case, TID is less than you know, in the number of elements in a vector add. We don't want to add more elements than we have inside of those vectors. And then matrix multiplication, we need to make sure that in our output rate matrix, the row in the column is a valid position in that output matrix. So we need to check both the row against, in this case, you know, for the simple version, we need to make sure they're both less than n because if we have say a 512 by 512 matrix, then row and column should both be within 0 to 5, 11, 0 to 5, 11, right? Because of zero indexing. And inside of our better matrix multiplication, you know, when we can have non-square matrices, we need to make sure that the row is less than M, which is the number of rows we have. 
and the column is less than k, which is the number of columns that we have in our output matrix. But then the rest is going to be the same, minus the fact that inside of our actual indexing itself into our matrices, you know, for matrix A, that's m by n, uh, this actually stays the same, so it's a row times n elements, uh, and that will get us to which particular row we need to be on, plus i, so that stays exactly the same as the, the other version. Uh, the only change in this calculation is with B now, because B is now an n by k matrix. So instead of skipping over n elements each time, we skip over k elements each time. But the column is still the same. And the fact that we're multiplying by i is the same. And then same thing down here, because we have an m by k result, we skip over, again, k elements per each row to get down to the correct row and write back our result. All right, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. So that's how we kind of handle these awkwardly sized inputs. Now, there's a little tuning that you can do. You know, if you think about your problem size, if you know that, you know, you're going to be launching, uh, you know, a, a problem that, say, isn't, uh, you know, divisible or, you know, maybe it's a multiple of 256, but isn't a multiple of say 512, then it might be better to make sure that your thread block sizing is a little bit different, right? And so this will make sure that you don't have too many inactive threads and thread blocks. Uh, if you're worried about, you know, occupancy or how many thread blocks you can shove on the GPU. So there may be situations like that where you may want to tune, uh, you know, the size of your thread blocks. But in general, most problems that, that won't be a, a terribly uh, big issue. Um, or at least in, I should say in most problems and a lot of problems so that won't be a very big issue there are situations where you are concerned with things like that but like I said that's going to do it for this example as always all this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch so we looked at the CUDA programming series today right so let's see if that'll go ahead and load there it is so you know We've got all the other things here. If you're interested in just you know matrix multiplication itself or vector addition, we've got series on those. So we, here's naive matrix multiplication, a cache tiled, and then also an aligned matrix multiplication. So feel free to check any of these out. Um, you know, run them. Let me know if you have any questions. And just like this video, that was a suggestion from a viewer. Feel free to let me know if you have any you know questions or any particular topics that you'd like to see a video on in the future. But that's it for me today. I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.